running his ruler across those numbers throughout reporting season and aristocrat leisure recording a strong first half profit the momentum there is that likely to continue tim this is a solid result and the shares have reacted well they've uh, gone up six or seven percent in trade today uh, the first half result uh, beat profit guidance and expectations uh, the gaming the gaming machine maker recorded the first half net profit of uh, a rise of 40 percent to 34.7 million dollars now we're only looking for around 31 million dollars they've also uh, increased their dividend uh, more than expected we we're looking for around three cents they've announced a fully frank four cent dividend uh, on the continued strong cash flows generated by the business at the moment and it really is their businesses here in Australia and the US which continue to drive the business we saw Australian divisions net profit up 18 percent while in the US revenues grow grew 20 percent so those divisions continue to uh, perform strongly uh, they are the world's second largest producer of the gaming machines and software and uh, they'll certainly be leveraged to an improvement in the US but this is a strong result given the mixed economic conditions we're seeing at the moment and within the consumer services space this kind of gaming uh, business continues to be quite resilient to the economic conditions it's faced at the moment uh, now certainly the dollar in terms of the Aussie dollar will be important for this for this company uh, for the first half of this result we saw in the US net profits generated of around 56 million dollars in the US so a, a, a pullback in the Aussie dollar will be of benefit to aristocrat leisure uh, and they're looking for a full year result for the calendar year to December 2012 of a net profit increase of around 60 percent on last year's result that uh, the company putting out a guidance of around 85 to 90 million dollars. This was again a bit better than expected. We were looking for a guidance of only around 85 million dollars. So that was a good result in seeing the share price move higher. Uh, I mean, Aristocrat has performed quite strongly over the past year. It's up 30 percent and the outlook for this company does remain quite good. Okay, and Seven Group Holdings also boosting profit today. We've seen shares uh, stage a nice run up. What's the Ford driver though here looking forward? We didn't get an outlook. This was also a strong result. Yes, there was no outlook, but it certainly was that industrial services division within the company uh, that really drove profits. Uh, the stocks reacted well, up 5% today. Net profits came in $165 million. That was above last year's profits of around $70 million, though last year's uh, profit was affected by significant items. Uh, within the result, it was their media interests that were of, uh, a bit of a weakness. The earnings there down 8%. They do, of course, hold a 32% stake in Seven West Media and a 25% stake in consolida uh, Consolidated Media. I think the market might have been looking for a bit of commentary on uh, the Consolidated Media and what's going on there as News Corp looks to make a play for this business. Uh, but they just said they'll wait until News Corp comes through with some kind of offer to them before they make any decisions. Uh, uh, News Corp is proposing to buy Consolidated Media for around $1.9 billion. But the company was fairly cautious in terms of its outlook on both media and China. They do, of course, uh, earn, uh, run Westrack, which is a Caterpillar uh, dealership which runs through New South Wales, Western Australia and parts of China and this business continues to perform quite strongly and it was one of the drivers of this strong profit result at the moment as our uh, mining continues to boom but if you have a look at uh, a one year chart, a two year chart sorry of Seven West Media you can see that the industrial production will be a major driver and you can see the black the black chart there is Seven Group Holdings share price where the blue, where the blue uh, chart is Caterpillar which trades on the New York Stock Exchange and there's quite a close uh, correlation between those two performances recently and uh, Seven Group Holdings share price has struggled a little bit over the last six months. A combination of factors here, both the weakness within that media space and also some concerns over China feeding into those industrial services businesses. But today the result very strong, the stock's performing well as well. Tim, uh, the general market seems to be losing a little bit of momentum today as materials continue to drag. A lot of analysts this morning saying that we're closely watching the Shanghai Composite. We're going to be looking at this in terms of key for our market today. And I can see we are tracking it fairly closely. Both the markets looking pretty flat. Why this connection specifically are, are we eyeing today? I know we saw a 1.7% fall in it yesterday. That's right, heavy falls on the Shanghai Composite yesterday. Uh, but certainly we do take leads in the morning from overseas markets like the US, but this in the afternoon trade we do often follow the Shanghai Composite. And if you have a look at the sectors making up the ASX today, uh, we would be performing a lot better if you ignore the resources and materials stocks, which are the significant underperformers today. In particular, the iron ore players. We're seeing Fortescue and Rio both down around 1.5%, while some of the mid and smaller play 
play uh, iron ores like uh, Atlas Iron and Mount Gibson Iron. They're down around 5 or 6% today as the iron ore price continues to slide. But that's sort of being offset a little bit by some strength in most of the big four banks, as well as some of the other large cap stocks such as Telstra and CSL and Coca-Cola are all having pretty good days today. Uh, but certainly uh, we'll be looking for all the data coming out this week. It is a busy week in terms of global economic data, but there still seems to be much, uh, a lot of focus on this speech from Ben Bernanke at the end of the week. In uh, local economic data today, we saw new home sales uh, disappoint for the month of July. That broke three months of gains. They dropped around 5.6%. So now the interest will be on whether these interest rate cuts we've seen recently from the Reserve Bank are flowing through enough to the economy and whether the, interest rate, uh, whether the Reserve Bank needs to cut further. But certainly the markets remain pretty cautious. Trading volumes have been very low. And again, uh, we'll be watching the data out this week as well as continued company earnings towards the end of the week. That speech from Ben Bernanke.